try and perform as you do to an audience but there's no crowd there so it was you know in, in a studio in, in Stockport and it was it was quite a weird experience because you know we did one of the tracks was you know we, we played it all the way through the first time mm -hmm. you know, one of the long ones and then um, one of the tracks um, took a few more attempts <laughs> but um, after like the fifth time or something and he's trying to pour out that emotion after like the fifth time or whatever it's that was pretty hard to do <laughs> but you know it, we we did it and it, it turned out pretty good didn't it yeah okay. it's cool are, are you still uh, supporting com of course uh, with the shows um but a while back on facebook you also mentioned that you were doing some experiments with uh, some kind of music mm -hmm. um, Music. Oh right, that's something that w us two are doing together. Yeah. It's a little project and between the two of us. Is that just going to be something between the two of you, or is that potentially something for the tangent? I think everybody at the tangent will be on it, yeah. but it's predominantly under our name. Okay. Yeah. And how did you come up with something like that? Uh, well. <laughs> I mean, Luke, Luke, Luke needs to speak as much as possible, but like, essentially we, we, we're, um, we're doing a, the Debussy thing is just a kind of, it's like a bonus track if you like, mm -hmm. but what we're, we've decided to do is to write our own symphony. Okay. Um, it's not actually going to be a full symphony, but it's going to be a symphonic piece of music, probably in four movements. Um, and when I say symphonic, it's not just going to be orchestra, it's, it's a full band with orchestra playing a large scale piece of music and we're both writing it and um, working on certain themes and everything and we're really looking forward to finishing kicking and getting back onto doing it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit more um, out there than um, earlier tangent stuff, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's okay. a bit even more of a tangent. Now, um, what I'm also curious about is if you've have got two releases out of the tangent. Um, I believe you're still working on your own debut album as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, but along the way, I noticed this has been a, a change in name. It was yeah. Hungry Lake, and it's now Ashen. Yeah. Uh, why the change in name? Um, well, a few people are coming to see our show. You know, I'm a, I'm a big um, Pain of Salvation fan, and their second album was One Hour by the Concrete Lake, and um, I just started the band not knowing how, you know, how much and how far I wanted to take it really, but I just loved the name Concretely, so we just started gigging under that name. And then it just took off really like with like um, new members and really got a, a great band going. And then, um, but um, I think whoever was coming to see us, some, some fans were saying, because um, there's obviously influences there, like obviously inspired by um, Daniel's music and whatnot, so whoever was coming to see us play, um, it was like afterwards, oh yeah, that's influenced by Pain and Salvation, but but I think that connection was there, you know, I was just trying to lose that connection, but obviously still like give a nod to Pain and Salvation, but like just take the name away and then see what happens, you know, and um, we like the name machine because it's a bit of a pun on my last name and the bass player's last name as well, but but yeah, it's, it's for, for the better, I think, but um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, hopefully soon. <laughs> it should be sometime next year, early, possibly, hopefully early next year, something, something like that. Yeah. But you, uh, a few weeks ago, you also, you also played with your own band in Holland. Yeah. Uh, how did that go? Yeah, really, you know, really well. It was our first time um, in Europe. It was um, absolutely amazing to, you know, come over and play. Uh, 
you know, my own music, my own compositions to it, a really supportive audience and um, yeah, it was the rest of the band really loved it and I enjoyed um, watching them, you know, yeah. enjoy playing live with us. So yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Oh, that's nice to hear. Oh, and uh, I think there's a lot of uh, good things to look forward to music-wise, which is uh, always nice, of course. Um, well, and of course, in a few hours we have a great show. Uh, we also brought a man with you, <coughs> um, which I kind of think is nice, because I've never seen my man before, live. Uh, and Guy Manning also has been a part of the tension. Uh, he was for a bit, yeah. yeah. Well, not for a bit, for quite a long time. He yeah. was with us for the the first um, for the first six albums, um, okay. and then, um, he uh, he played a part on. He's not been so much part of the live group mm -hmm. um, in the past. He's played once or twice with the band, but um, yeah, he's uh, and he's with us tonight. Sure, playing his own music. He's a very skilled songwriter, yeah. music, so, and uh, he's got a huge band with him tonight. Okay. Eight eight people. Eight people. So, so we just hope that we don't have a band fight because they'll win. Sure, yeah. <laughs> two or two for every one of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you also had another line of change recently. Jonathan Merritt decided to leave. Yes. Um, but then on Rash, he left Joy So this, this really, you uh, know, half of Rashing is now also part of the tension. Uh, yeah, and, still and, right and that's absolutely no problem at all. Yeah. You know, it's just not a problem. I mean. Um, as far as I can see, all my experience of, of being a musician is about learning from people. Mm -hmm. And when you're a young man, you learn an awful lot from older people. But when you get to be an older man, the chance to learn from younger people is one of the best things that ever happens in your whole life. And you suddenly realise that younger people have got so much to teach you because yeah. They're looking at a world in a different way, and so you know when Luke suggested Dan, you know, obviously uh, I was okay. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, like um, they get on really well. There's no problem about them being in two bands. You know, it's just a yeah. you know they've got they've got what they want to say in in that band, and they've got what they want to say in this one. So. Yeah. That's it, yeah. I mean, um, we both we both enjoy loads of different styles and genres and stuff, but um, you know, the, the two bands are very different even though they're very similar in a lot of ways but um, me and Dan love like, to play for, uh, as versatile as possible like, in any style and delve into loads of different styles and the tangent just gives us a load, load of new things and a lot of freedom for me on guitar um, yeah. to play in the tangent lots of, lots of um, improvised kind of stuff and you know a lot, a lot of space and just yeah totally different experience altogether, yeah. which is another side of playing, another side of music. Yeah. And then I'm sure it's the same for Dan as well, yeah. So it's cool to have him on board, yeah. Okay, well that's nice to hear. Uh, well, the, the last thing I really want to mention, because uh, I read the stories on Facebook about your trip to Canada, mm -hmm. which didn't go, well, <laughs> not really well. How do you back up on such an event? Well, Luke, Luke saw the, uh, the guy. You, uh, you told him about the guy. What did the guy do? <laughs> oh, guys. Um, yeah, I was unfortunate one that to see him load our um, fragile stickered equipment onto a conveyor belt, but didn't just, it was all waist tight, so he could have just lifted it gently across, but I unfortunately didn't see him do that. And I was saying, to uh, everybody, do you want me to commentate on what this guy's doing to our equipment? And everyone was like, uh, okay. So I was like, right, I mean, you know, he was just throwing it on to the conveyor belt and he was, 
Um, bouncing. Was, yeah, it was, it was bouncing quite a few times. Obviously, you know, it's terrible. And it's, I know fragile stickers all over it. And that's how, it's not just our equipment, it's our lives going up there, you know, into the plane. And, yeah. And, um, and consequently, yeah, we had a, you know, uh, you know, I'm not saying sadly, uh, I'm really glad it was the keyboards in the end because they were easier to fix, but um, <laughs> the guitars were being thrown and landing on the end, bouncing and then coming down the conveyor belt and uh, the, the keyboards case just got thrown on and then big heavy case got thrown on top of the keyboards. Uh, sadly, on stage in Canada, the keyboards broke down. Almost certainly, as a result of receiving a nasty, yeah. as a receiving a nasty mess and it wiping its internal memories and uh, electrically electric grown sound, of course, yeah. you know, and that was a um, a six thousand mile round trip, well, eight thousand mile round trip actually, to play one concert, which had been paid for by an enthusiastic group of progressive rock fans in Canada. Yeah who paid for us to make sure we were on an aeroplane so that we could go there and play that one concert. We had one chance to get it right. And the tragedy of walking onto the stage to a full house, to big, big applause, saying hello, and them all looking forward to it. We just sat there and everything went completely wrong. And if you can imagine what that's like when you've gone all that distance, it was just horrific. And uh, to realize that it had just been caused by one man who wanted to have a bit of fun throwing people's luggage around. Um, it's just a very sad, sad yeah. person. And, you know, um, I don't know, maybe he's got what he wants, you know, maybe that's what he wants, you know, that in the end of the day, that guy, he's a nobody who works, yeah. you know, and here we are talking about him in Belgium, which is like 7,000 miles away from where he is. and. You know, maybe this is what he wanted. Maybe he wanted me to talk about him or something. Or be, yeah. but like, you know. So let's not talk about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but still, what? Did you still managed to play the show. In These the guys did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you composed some music on stage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I think it was um, one of the major things I, I remember looking across the stage and it was just coming into the, like, the quiet acoustic bit in the wiki man and uh, I noticed Andy was really <laughs> struggling with the keyboards and everything it was like it was the top keyboard or something and it was, wasn't um, sending the correct data to the computer and whatnot and I seen him struggling and it like died down to, to go into that acoustic bit but then turned around to Tony drummer and was like just gave him a quick nod and then he played like a really really nice beat and it came out of that section and we just decided to improvise because you know thought you know there's, there's an amazing audience there we were all up for it and everything so we thought you know we'll give him give him a bit of entertainment and give him a show um, for I don't know about 10 minutes or so and then obviously it's only so many guitar solos that an audience can hear him in that time, so uh, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, because of the fact that we're a small band, and, um, if we lose one instrument, we've lost a quarter of the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. Well, were you able to, to fix everything again? No, oh, that's... no, that was it. Um, the show was basically very, very difficult to do. The audience were incredibly supportive mm -hmm. and exceedingly kind to me after we'd been over because they realized how much it hurt. In fact, I was actually physically sick from the stomach, you know, yeah. when I came off the stage I was so upset. Um, and uh, but the next day it was just full of kind people saying that um, they really enjoyed what we managed to do. We managed to play a few songs and get through them. They weren't quite how they normally are, but they enjoyed them anyway. Um, and um, you know uh, the next day Facebook was full of people saying how impressed they were about how professional we'd been, that we didn't lose our tempers and smash our gear up on stage or <laughs> stupid things like that. Yeah. You know? We just sort of like got through it and uh, gave them the show and then came home feeling a bit, oh God. <laughs> but you know, I um, hope it doesn't happen to that. You know? No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you should have been very carefully. Yes, I think yeah. so. 
Sorry, I even got that wrong. Good luck with yeah. uh, live prog. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Brilliant.